This is about Green's theorem, and it's a little bit of a different presentation from what's in our book, Stewart at least, and in most books. First, I want to give you um, some of the evidence that there's a theorem to be found here. The key thing is we're always thinking with this a situation about the, the circulation, the integral around a closed curve of a vector field. And so here's our closed curve and we've got some sort of vector field. Maybe it looks like this. And this one, for example, has a positive circulation around this counterclockwise curve because the arrows are bigger when we're going with them and smaller when we're going against them. And the claim is that there's another rather different way to calculate that, which is pretty darn profound. And the first piece of evidence is, um, for example, if we do linear vector fields, we did a little exp experimentation in our class on that. Let me just show you the vector field analyzer 2. If you have something like 3 times x plus 7 times y for the x component, so 3x plus 7y, j, i, sorry, and then 12x plus 11y, j, I've plotted that field, and then I've got it set to show the circulation graphically with color, and also it gives us the circulation. But what's more interesting is the observation that no matter what box or circle I draw, you might note this ratio is the same. So the ratio here is the circulation per unit area. And so, at least for a linear vector field, it's not true for nonlinear vector fields. That's a constant no matter what curve I do. Okay, that's very interesting. So it looks like the circulation per unit area is interesting. It's a constant in these examples. And there's even a formula for it. If, you, if we look at um, this vector field and this one, where would this 5 possibly be coming from? I claim it comes from 12 minus 7. Well, let's see. Does it have to do with the 3? Let's plot this guy. Oh, still 5. That didn't have anything to do with it. And what about this 11? 13, change that. Still a 5, but if I change this guy to a 6, ah, indeed. So it looks like it's this guy minus this guy. So in other words, it looks like it's equal to the partial derivative. How would we get numbers? The guess is that it's the partial derivative of this with respect to x minus the partial derivative of p with respect to y. OK. So is that? True. Well, now this is very special because linear vector fields are exactly the things where, oh, I'm not even showing the right thing. Here we go. Sorry, I was forgetting to click. So the circulation per area is dq dx minus dp dy. That's the guess we have. This is exactly the kind of thing that is constant when the vector field components are just linear. And so we have to figure out how to get beyond that. But we know sort of how to get beyond that usually. If you have some statement that says, the total circulation in a simple case is the area of your region times this interesting quantity. Well, that's the kind of thing that usually becomes an integral. Instead of the area times a constant, is it the integral over, well, let's see, we need a name for the region. If this is C, let's call this region R. Maybe it's the integral over the region of this quantity. Now, here's where we connect to the fundamental theorem of calculus. Hmm. I've got, let me rewrite this in its explicit form, the integral of a non-differentiated thing, just f itself, over the boundary of r. Let me introduce a notation here. The partial derivative symbol can also be used if you take a region. We're going to use it as a notation, a very nice little notation, for the boundary of r. So c is the boundary of r here. and the, um, what we're saying is the integral over a boundary is, hopefully, we're guessing, is equal to the integral over the whole thing of a derivative. That's exactly the setup that we had in FTC. Something to do with the boundary without a derivative is something to do with the whole region 
with a derivative. Now, this is a kind of a weird and unexpected kind of derivative to see, but it turns out to be the right thing. Okay. So the next step, the next piece of evidence that our class got, and I'll just tell you, was that um, if you look at, if you look locally, look with, with the microscope, Uh, at the circulation. So what we did was we look at a point and we look at a little box. We take the circulation, say the size of this is h by h, and then we shrink it down to be tinier and tinier boxes. So in other words, we take the limit as h goes to zero of the circulation, call that ch maybe for the box, this curve is c sub h, of f dot dr. Well, this limit just be, um, becomes zero, because when the box gets really small, the circulation gets really small. But what we discovered, and this fits in with what I was just saying, is that the circulation per unit area, we divided by the area h squared of the box, this limit didn't go to zero. And what we discovered that was exactly dp, no, sorry, dq dx minus dp dy. This has a name. This is called the scalar curl. Well, really, it's really this that gives it its significance. Curl just means curliness, curviness. You know, cir circulation is, is related to this word. How much is it curling at the point? It's called the scalar curl because eventually we're going to get a vector curl in three dimensions. So it's really just a measure of infinitesimally. What's the density? It's the local density. The density is because I'm dividing by the area of circulation. Huh. And it turns out, you can show, very. We, we're going to show it in our class two ways, um, that it gives you this interesting combination, very simple combination of the partial derivatives of q and p, of the components of f. Okay. So I claim that just knowing this local result, basically, is going to give us a way to prove Green's theorem. Okay. So we've got all the pieces in place. So we want it to show. We want to show that if C is the boundary of some region R, so here's R in the middle and here's C, then the circulation around C of a vector field is equal to the integral over the interior of dq dx minus dp dy, the scalar curl. And then you integrate it dA. That's where that area comes in. That's the, the substitute of just area times this number that was working in the linear case, the very simple case, which we saw in the vector field analyzer too. OK. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working on this thing. And I'm going to emulate the proof from the BC FTC Redux video. I'm going to take R and I'm going to chop it up in a bunch of little pieces, which is what you do when you think about integrals over R. But the funny thing is I'm not working on the integral over R yet. I'm working on the integral. I'm, th I'm going to claim it has something to do with the circulation around C. Okay? I'm going to chop R into little pieces, and I'm going to calculate the circulation around any of these little pieces. All righty. So I'm going to take um, a little a little curve, let's call this, uh, let's say the this grid system has like numbers i equals 1 to m and j equals 1 to n running like this. And this is region rij. And then it has a boundary. Okay, so I'm going to calculate, instead of doing this directly, I'm going to look at the integral over the boundary of this little region. And I'm going to take the circulation of that guy. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to sum those all up over all the slots, i and j, the grid slots. So it's just taking all of these little tiny boxes and summing up the circulations on those. Now let's see what happens. Let's, let's blow that up a little bit, just a few boxes next to each other. If I look at the circulation around this box, and then also the circulation around this box, what do you notice? 
I'm going to be counting this internal edge twice in opposite directions. Those are going to cancel. And then, uh, but I'm also summing it to the circulations around these boxes. So for example, this box is circulating. And I'm always going, boundary is always going to mean counterclockwise for us to be, to be consistent. OK, so I'm integrating around these. These guys are now going to cancel. Well, if I'm doing it over all these boxes, every single internal boundary is going to cancel. The only things that are going to be left is the external boundary. And if you're really thinking, if you're looking at this very carefully and you're skeptical, or if you're a PhD mathematician, you probably notice that I'm sweeping a little bit of a tiny thing under the rug about exactly how the boundary fits in here. But what I want to claim is that all, since all the internal boundaries cancel, that is just going to be seemingly an overly complicated way to calculate the total circulation. So all of the internal circulations, every internal boundary cancels, and the only things that don't cancel are these guys, because they don't have any, any pair to cancel with. So that is really most of the deal for Green's theorem, I think, that you can take this global circulation and make it a sum of the local circulations. Now, the sum, as I said, the sum, ooh, that's tantalizingly like an integral. But I have to take the limit as these little pieces go to 0. And I have to make sure I don't, do the, don't have the problem that I could have had also in the FTC case of taking the limit of a bunch of things that are just going to 0. Okay, so I just have to be careful about sort of scaling and stuff. So let's, ooh, I probably should have kept the picture, but okay. So, and this is where that observation about local density of circulation comes in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that sum ij, and I'm not going to look just at the circulation around the, let's see, I was calling it the boundary of region ij, f dot dr. I'm going to observe that what was nice when those guys, when a little box got small from our experimentation, was divide that by the area of that little region. That's the area of rectangle ij, region ij. OK, well, that's different from what I was just calculating. So I just have to multiply it by area of ij again. So there's two reasons this is a good idea. One is, this is a quantity that we've all, that we have a separate proof. This is not in this video, but we had a separate proof that this thing becomes the scalar curl and just a simple combination of partial derivatives, dq dx minus dp dy, in the limit. And the other reason it's good is this is exactly the setup for a Riemann sum. The sum over a bunch of pieces of some function, some numbers, times the areas of the pieces. Okay? And so the limit as um, n goes to infinity, let's say that's the number of pieces, that is going to be, that's the definition of the integral over r, the whole of r, of this function. But as the limit, as you take these, uh, the limit of these guys getting smaller, this guy turns out to go to tpdx minus, dq dx minus tp dy. And it's actually a pretty, it's really not a bad calculation to show that. There's a couple ways, to, different ways to show it. But you just kind of, you just kind of crank it out, actually. Um, and so in the limit, this quantity is going to this guy. But every, in, at every stage, a single stage in the limit, this guy was still giving me, this is just from the previous uh, page, this was just the circulation cleverly broken up into a bunch of little local circulations. So the global circulation was the sum of the local circulations. And then in order to take the limit and kind of do the microscope effect, I just divide and multiply by the area. I recognize a Riemann sum for an integral. I go ahead and take the limit. This guy becomes exactly this function. And the rest of it just becomes the integral dA. And so these guys turn out to be equal. So that to recap, we have this idea that this, it was really this canceling of internal boundaries was crucial. And that was true, true in the FTC presentation that I have. Canceling internal boundaries. We had a kind of a calculation, these local circulation calculations, which automatically canceled internal boundaries. And so only the global boundary was left. 
And then it was just a matter of figuring out, is there something nice when I take the limit of these local circulations as I go to zero? And again, that's something I, I might do another video on, but my class has already done that in class, um, that in fact it goes to this, which is really nice. And then that's it. Then you just take the limit, and the sum of those all those local calculations becomes the global calculation. OK, so in sum, we have Green's theorem, which says that the circulation around the boundary of a region of a vector field is the integral of, and I'm going to write out scalar curl, because it's really, really, really nice that scalar curl has this, this uh, explicit expression in terms of partial derivatives. But what I'm focusing on right now is just that it's some kind of derivative of f. And so integral over a boundary is the integral over the original region, but of a derivative. And so that's the boundary and the derivative getting exchanged. That's the heart of any kind of version of the fundamental theorem. And we're going to see more. They all fit this pattern. And they can all be proved in the same way that you just saw.